I'd like to say welcome to everyone. Do we have any visitors that we need to introduce? <laughs> Most of them I think we know, but. Okay, um, welcome to graduation Sunday. Burl. Oh, they've already graduated. Oh, they've already graduated, okay. Okay, welcome. All right, anyone else? All right, so welcome to Graduation Sunday. We are pleased to honor soon to be 2023 graduates and award CUPC Faith Scholarship will be done later in the service. Church camp information night will be held on Tuesday, May 9th at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This is for families to attend with youth interested in attending camp during the summer. On May 20th, Saturday, from 1 to 3, Callie Eckert would like to invite the congregation or anyone else to her graduation party at 325 George Street. Uh, save the dates for food truck party. This year's Vacation Bible School at CUPC. The weekly event will be held on Wednesday from 5 to 7, beginning June 28th through July 26th. A light meal will be served. Children four years old through just that just completed fifth grade may be registered by contacting Ann Polito at 515-681-9519 and those who would like to volunteer to help may contact Eileen Hansen at 515-402-1460. The, uh, the art trip information is on the announcements and Middle River French Church CCA Food Pantry is welcoming volunteers to help with stocking shelves and carrying groceries to cars during their weekly hours on Monday and Wednesdays from 9 to 6. If you have any questions, please contact Julian Goodhue at 515-249-0366. Also, the Hartford Fire Department Junior Fire Academy is Tuesday, June 27th, ages 5 to 11. Register by May 19th at the City Hall or by email to the clerk of Hartford. Uh, let's see. Contributions for the CCA Food Pantry. In May, the suggested items are facial tissue, fruit juice, not frozen, please, garbage bags, and graham crackers. And then also, the Pentecost offering is currently being received. Information and envelopes are available on the table at the back of the sanctuary. This offering is designated for children at risk, youth, and young adults as they build a life of faith. CUPC keeps 40% of the offering to designate to a ministry or the cause of their choice. The Education and Mission Committee has determined this year's offering will go to help support Dylan Bellinger as he begins his ministry with Overland Missions in Zambia, Africa. Please prayfully consider what you are able to do to help. When we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Uh, let's see, noisy collection. Just kind of read through, there's some other things going on. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Riley not here. Burl has one today. Happy birthday, Burl. Just one today. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else I'm not seeing? Looks like just Whirl. So, thank you, Eric. Stand if you are able for the call to worship. Let praise to God resound in the heavens. Let praise to God fill the earth. Let all God's angels offer praise and rejoicing. Let all God's creatures sing praise and joy. Open your hearts and spirits today. 
Let us praise the Lord today and always. Please join us in hymn 488, I was there to hear your morning cry. to confession. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful that you have called us together this day, drawing us from darkness to the glory of your light. May our spirits rejoice at the good news you have for us today. Open your hearts to your healing love as we come before you in prayer. Patient God, sometimes we are just too busy for our own good. We pledge ourselves to hectic schedules demands on time, energy, and resources that erode all too quickly. We seem to be rushing through life. But the cries of those in need often go unheeded in our lure of activities which sap our energy, our resources, our spirits. Slow us down a bit, Lord. Remind us again that we are responsible for the care of this world, for reaching out and offering your healing love. Help us to hear the words of patient love that, that you have for us. Remind us again of Jesus' words to his disciples when he told them that they should love one another as he loved them. May we take time to bear witness to that love in all that we do. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, Christ is with you. You are beloved of God, and God's care will always surround you. Be at peace and rejoice.
Please be seated. So first off, thanks to my husband, who I roped into doing this today, because Rebecca's out of town at a wedding, and Sharon's out of town for Albert's 80th birthday. And I said, it'll be fine. It won't be anything. And then I was just like, oh, yeah, and there's happy birthday. Don't forget, because it's Phil's birthday. Oh, yeah, and don't forget, we got to do this now. Oh, yeah, and we're doing offertories again. Surprise. So um, many thanks to you for, for playing nicely and, and, and doing this for me today. I owe you one. So, and it's almost your birthday, and I'm saying it publicly now, so, so you all have to hold me to it. Um, and before I call up the graduates, um, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you um, to the members of the worship and admin committee who, who did breakfast this morning, who I know were here yesterday and here early this morning, and doing setups and, and, and food making and clean up and all that stuff, and it's really humid in here today, so I appreciate you even more. So many thanks to all of you for all your hard work for breakfast. We appreciate it, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna ask our graduates to please come forward um, we, are, we have some presentations to do. Yeah, if you want to come stand over this way, you know, all kind of be together in the middle there. So. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So normally what we do for this is we have, we have little gifts for them, we do a blessing for them, but we also give them the chance if they want to, you know, just let us know what their future plans are. Um, so you're welcome to do that. I'll just, we'll play past the microphone down the line. Just say your name, because um, even those of you that we've seen regularly, y'all have changed so much that, oh my gosh, I even did a couple of double takes this morning. So. Um, so yeah, just, just say your name and let us know what future plans you have. I'm Ethan. Uh, after high school, I will be doing, uh, taking a one year break and then getting a job. After that one year break, I would be going on to further education. Awesome, you guys can just pass it. I'll pick it up at the end. Uh, I'm Eric and I plan on working to get my GED and I am currently working and can, will be continuing to work. I'm Zach. I'm going to be going to college for welding. I'm Callie Ecker, and I'm going to be going down to Graceland University in Lamoni to major in biology and natural sciences and education. I'm Logan Howard, and I plan on going to Simpson College where I will run uh, cross country and major in health and exercise science. My name's Austin. I plan on going to DMAC to their electrical utility tech program to become a lineman. Um, I'm Logan. I'm hoping to go get a job in some kind of auto techie, working with cars and stuff like that. Awesome. awesome. All right. So we will. Um, Gloria is going to bring your things down to you. So uh, we have Logan Buchanan. Um, Zachary Duchesne. I'm going alphabetically, sorry. <laughs> okay, good. Because they're alphabetical on the table, so I'm going alphabetically. So, And then uh, Callie Eckert. And then Austin. And Logan. And Eric and Ethan. So we want you to, first thing, there's a, there's a few here. I'm so excited. I have to come over here, okay. <laughs> Logan's my first one. My first confirmand from here. I'm so excited. So I finally get to see one because you got confirmed before I got here. So, um, but Logan's my first confirmant to graduate. So, um, but I am so excited. It's like we have flames missing from our little banner now um, because you all have have graduated and are 
and are moving on to the next stage of your life. And so it's just a little something you can take with you for, for those of you who were confirmed here in the church. But the next thing I want to do is, is say a blessing over all of you. Um, because this is one of those moments in life. Um, in lots of cultures, there's, there's always some kind of ceremony or ritual for someone to become an adult. And in ours, it really is graduation. That's the closest thing we do um, to having that kind of ritual. Because I hate to tell you this, when you turn 18, it's really not that exciting. I mean, you, you know, you get to vote now because they, they, everything else you have to wait till you're 21 now. There's nothing exciting when you turn 18 other than you have to like legally sign for things yourself now. Um, but graduation really is that moment when you get to start on a, you know, a new path in life. You get to start making decisions and you get to start doing things that, that you've always wanted to do. Um, I know I, all, there's probably not a person here who didn't have a class in school where they went, what in the world am I ever gonna do with this? Why do I have to take this? This is so dumb, I don't wanna be here. I had a daughter who said that repeatedly. I don't wanna take this. I know, just do it. You have to do it to graduate. You have to take this, you have to do it. And yet when she found what she wanted to do, not once did I ever have to say, did you do your homework? Not once. So my, my advice to you is to try to find what what you want to do. Try to find what it is that really speaks to you that you want to do. And it might take you a long time to find it. And it might change. I was going to be an English professor, just so you all know. That was my first job. Of course, my first job was going to be an opera singer when I was like seven. Um, that was the thing I was going to do when I was a little kid, was be an opera singer. So instead, I married one. I didn't become one, I married one. Um, but I was going to be an English professor. And then I got my master's degree and did it for about a year and went, oh, God, no. I can't do this for 30 or 40 years. This will kill me. Just suck the life right out of you, having to teach composition day after day. No, that's not how you spell that word. I, I couldn't do it one more day. I just couldn't. And fortunately, around that time, I got this little, you know, little tap on my shoulder. You know, you'd be really good in a pulpit. But I don't want to go back to school again. I just got a master's degree. I don't want to do this again. But be willing to listen to what your heart tells you, to what, to what God tells you, to, to where you're led to go. Because sometimes it will take you on an adventure you never imagined, never, never could have believed you'd be on. So that's, that's part of my advice to you. But always know that we're here, that we're part of your family too, that we love all you guys and, you know, you're always welcome here. You're always part of us. Please come and bug us whenever you want. There is always a welcome for you. And, and since it's us, there's probably food involved too. So, I mean, we're good at that. So just know that you are always part of us, even though you're heading on to next steps. So how about if we all, um, I'll put a hand here. Y'all just, you know, put a hand on the person next to you. Or, there you go, perfect since I can't get to all of you. There's too many of you. It'll be fine. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for each and every person here. We thank you for each of these young people as they're ready to start this next phase of their lives, as they're ready to, to move on, to start their adventures as adults, whether it be working or, or in college or getting training. There's so many things possible for each one of them. So many opportunities, so many chances to, to figure out what comes next. Help them to, to remember that they are loved, that each and every one of them is loved by you and by us. Help them to always remember that they have a home here whenever they need it. We're always here for them. Help each one to, to fulfill all the potential you have for them, all the things you have in store. May they welcome it with joy and with peace and with praise and with love. I know all of us can't wait to see what adventures lie before them. Keep them all safe. Watch over them as you always have. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sure. No, I mean, when you're done. Oh, okay. No, well, I'm, I'm done. So we're going to move on to, you know, scholarship stuff. So, so we will, uh, yep, scoot in a bit. Oh, I All right. Um, so if Zachary, Callie, Logan, Eric, and Ethan want to stay up here, um, because they had all, will all be receiving scholarships, and, and the other ones can go and have a seat, um, so that we can do that part next. The ones that so yeah, just have a seat in the front row here, the ones getting scholarships. All right. Mm -hmm. Good morning. This morning, the CUPC Scholarship Committee is pleased to present the 2023 CUPC Faith Scholarships. The current committee consists of five members, Lindsay Clark, Scott Johnson, Ann Polito, Cinda Polito, and Michael Van, Van Hamming. That's me. We would like to express appreciation to Cinda who is stepping down from the committee after six years of service. As you may recall, the CUPC Faith Scholarship is available with the following qualifications to be considered. Scholarships are available as early as following the senior year in high school. Membership and or significant involvement at CUPC are required to qualify. This is a one-time award. Scholarships are not renewable. All qualified applicants will receive an award. Scholarships are available to those A, pursuing post-secondary education, enlisting in the military service, seeking full-time employment, D, participating in a full-time internship or volunteer service program. Since the church scholarship program was established in 2017, the scholarship fund has been supported by many individuals and families through generous memorials and other financial gifts. It is wonderful to share that the fund has grown well in this time. So on behalf of the scholarship committee, I would like to share our gratitude for all the support you have shown to this special fund. With session's approval, the CUPC scholarship committee is pleased to announce and present scholarships this morning to five individuals who have participated in and made faithful contributions to the ministries of our church. So may we begin, Scott. Our first recipient is Zachary Duchesne. Zachary began attending CUPC when he was a young boy by attending Vacation Bible School. He continued by attending youth programs at CUPC and helping serve fellowship on Sunday mornings following worship. Zach has volunteered to help with the Senior Citizen Thanksgiving dinner, dinner as a youth server. He has provided leadership when there is a goal in mind by coming up with a plan and communicating with others involved so that everyone can be successful in fulfilling their part of the project. Zach can be seen helping with activities sponsored by the fire department and enjoys being involved in local community projects. Congratulations, Zachary, on receiving a 2023 CUPC Faith Scholarship. Thank you. 
Our second awardee is Callie Eckert. Callie became a part of the CUPC church family as a young girl. She was baptized in 2015 and became a member of the church in 2017. She has been involved at CUPC by participating in and volunteering for Vacation Bible School, helping in the nursery and assisting with fellowship. Callie has been a part of the youth group and Christmas pageant, and she volunteered to help prepare and serve the senior citizens Thanksgiving dinner. Callie served as head manager for the Carlisle football team and team captain for the Lincoln bowling team. Her helpful and caring spirit is reflected in areas of service that include preparing meals for the Heartland, Girl Scout projects, as well as helping those who need assistance with outdoor projects. Congratulations, Callie, on receiving a 2023 CUPC Faith Scholarship. The next recipient is Logan Howard. Logan became a part of the CUPC church family as a young man. He was baptized and became a member of the church in 2018. His involvement at CUPC includes Vacation Bible School as a participant and later as a volunteer. Logan has, be, has been part of the youth group and participated in Christmas programs. He also has helped with ushering, serving meals, and participating in Gracie's Bake Sale for one great hour of sharing and youth fundraisers. Logan's leadership skills are evident through school sports where he has been a senior leader as well as serving as a counselor to younger children during Vacation Bible School. He is a diligent worker to, at school to achieve academic and athletic success and is committed to helping others within the community by sharing his faith and praying for others. Congratulations, Logan, on receiving a 2023 CUPC Faith Scholarship. Okay, now we're on to the Laird boys. <laughs> Eric Laird became a part of the CUPC church family as a young boy joining his family in worship and other activities. He was baptized at the church in 2013. Highlights of his involvement at CUPC include annual Thanksgiving dinner, vacation Bible school, and Christmas caroling. He also volunteered for various things during his younger years. Eric seeks to be a good role model and a positive influence to those around him. He has volunteered for Meals for the Heartland and helped sponsor two children in the third world countries through Food for the Hungry. Congratulations, Eric, on receiving the 2023 Faith Scholarship. Our final awardee is Ethan Laird. Ethan joined his family in worship and church activities and became part of CUPC family as a young boy and was baptized in 2013. His involvement at CUPC includes Vacation Bible School, helping with the Senior Citizen Annual Thanksgiving Dinner, and Ethan was a part of our evening youth programs and participated in Christmas caroling. Ethan likes to guide his peers and help them be successful. He and his family sponsor two children through, through Food for the Hungry, who serves people in the third world country. And Ethan has volunteered for Meals for the Heartland and other charities. Congratulations, Ethan, on receiving his 2023 CUPC scholarship. Zachary, Callie, Logan, Eric, and Ethan, it is with true joy that your church family recognizes your faithful contributions to the ministries of this church and beyond. We thank you for giving your time and your talents of God's work in this community of faith. We will look forward to hearing about your life experiences, and we encourage you to continue to live out your life faith, your faith wherever God may lead you. Congratulations. Well, while we're all shuffling, I want to invite the young children to come up for the children's sermon. Come on over, because I know we got lots of folks. Get kids.
Good morning, everybody. Well, good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's better. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I know you guys are not this quiet. I know you're not. Oh, my goodness. You're always quiet at school. Okay. I used to tell my mom that, too. Um, so the sermon we're going to talk about today, um, I'm going to talk about stuff, really little things. Have you ever had, like, a little pebble or something stuck in your shoe? No? Am I the only one that does this? Really? You've never had something stuck in your shoe that shouldn't be there or stepped on a Lego? Oh, yeah, you've stepped on a Lego. I've stepped on plenty. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Something small. Or have you ever been, like, or you're out eating and you get, like, a piece of pepper or something that you don't want and, it, oh, and it's really strong and you don't like it? You ever done that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not fun, is it? But sometimes, the, the point of what we're going to talk about today is sometimes really little things can make a huge difference. Really little things can make a huge difference to all of us. That's what we're going to talk about. So sometimes we like to think because we're little that we can't make a difference, but you can. I bet every single one of you has changed your family's life in some way. I bet. Because I bet when you were really little, there were nights when your parents said, I wish they'd just be quiet and go to sleep now, because I'd like to sleep. Or how can they be hungry again? Or, oh my word, what is that smell coming from the baby? I bet you they all said that about each and every one of you. And about each and every one of them out here, too. I bet their parents said it, too. But little things are really important, aren't they? Just like all of you are. And that's one of the things that, that Paul talked about in his letter is the importance of little things. How important they really are that, yeah, there's big concepts and big people in the world, but sometimes it's the smallest things that can make all the difference. So I want you to be thinking about that, okay? When, when I start talking and going through the sermon. Okay? Have you guys seen seeds? How little are they? Pretty tiny, aren't they? Little itty bitty things. And think about the great big plants that grow out of them. Yeah, little, yeah, little tiny seeds. So you can kind of think of yourselves the same way. Little itty bitty things that are going to sprout into something huge and new. And one day you'll be just like all the folks that were up here graduating from school. It won't be long and you'll be there. And people will be sitting here going, when did you get so tall? What happened? Oh my goodness. You, they think you'll be taller than them? You know what? I'm, I'm taller than my mom by a lot. Oh yeah. I can rest my chin on her head. Yeah, my mommy's kind of short. And my husband's mommy is really short. When my kids were little, they used to say, yay, I'm taller than Grandma Pike. And we all went, that's not really an accomplishment. Um, <laughs> but good for you. You're in the third grade. You know, yeah, because Grandma Pike's really short, huh? Yep. But one day, you guys are going to be just like all the people up here, aren't you? It'll be here before you know it. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for this chance to be together today, for this chance to remember that small things are so very, very important, that we're going to grow and change and do wonderful things, just like each little flower seed does. We're going to be big and tall and do amazing things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Very good. Okay, everybody can go back to their seats. Okay, I know it says that our scripture lesson is Romans 1, 1 through 17. And it was until about 9 o'clock last night. Um, yeah, that was part of my frustration this morning as I was like, really, the Holy Spirit moves at 9 o'clock at night on a Saturday night. You could do this sooner. But um, as I was studying and working on this, very often in the lectionary, this passage gets combined with some verses in chapter 3. 
which originally I wasn't going to do, but after I read them, I just went, no, this is where we have to go. So in view of time, I'm going to skip the first chapter part, and I'm just going to read you um, Romans chapter 3, verses 22 to 26. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, Paul's letter to the Romans, quick introduction. It's one of the worst books in the Bible to have to preach from, with a couple of exceptions. There's a couple chapters that are okay. But for the most part, it's horrible to preach from because this passage is a great example it is so dense, and there's so much stuff, and it's so wordy that it doesn't preach well. It, there's just too much there. It doesn't have any nice, cute, pithy sayings most of the time. It's just this long, long sentences. Okay, who here ever had to um, um, diagram sentences in English? Who had to do it? You're aging yourself, but yes, okay. These would be horrific. In like the first seven verses of chapter one are one sentence that just has all these subordinate clauses after clauses after clauses, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And you can't find the end of it or the verb or you know, trying to figure out what's going on. And then compound the fact that this was originally written in Greek, and now we're trying to read it in English, and so it just doesn't, it's just dense. It's awful. Y'all thought reading Shakespeare in high school was bad. This is like way worse. It's really hard to break it down and figure out what's going on. Now I know what I said in the children's sermon and what I just read you. And you probably went, lady, how in the world did you get that from that passage? Well, I'll tell you. As I said earlier, English professor, Ha ha, did you know you were getting grammar lessons today? Yay, English grammar. So, but here's what I want to say. In, especially in Romans, because it, Romans is not a letter. Remember that. It might say that in some of your Bibles, that it's Paul's letter to the Romans. It's not really. It's not an answer. It's not a correspondence. This is Paul writing, I guess you could say a letter of introduction to the church in Rome. He's never been there, has not met these people. But he's writing them this letter explaining to them, it's basically a theological treatise. This is his understanding of who Christ is and what Christianity means and all that. That's, I mean, that's what this is. Which is why it's so dense. Which is why it can be difficult to explain sometimes. Because Paul's writing theology and we all know how much everyone loves to read theology. There are pieces of Romans that are very good. I mean, people love the end of chapter eight. You know, nothing can separate us from the love of God, that whole passage. That's a brilliant one. There's some stuff later on in there, brilliant. But there's some pieces in here that, mm, they don't preach, not easily, not easily. And this one, what struck me as I'm, as I'm studying and going through it, that all of a sudden, I remembered this passage from seminary. Because this was one of the passages that got put in front of us as a quiz to translate these verses. Translate this. Don't read any commentaries. Just sit there with a the dictionary, you know, with the concord and just translate it with your lexicon. Right. And the difference in the translations was incredible. Two reasons. 
This is one of the passages our, our professors lifted up to us on the importance of small things. That small things make all the difference in the world. And I still remember my professor, Dr. Sadler, saying to me, it's not the big words and the big concepts that are going to throw you when you're preaching, when you're teaching. Those aren't because there's long listings and all these books about what this means and what this doesn't mean. And he's, it's the little words that are going to trip you up every time. It's the little prepositions, the little connections, the little connector words. They're going to get you every single time. And in this passage, there's two of them. Because there's one that talks about the glory of God. But the way it's written and the way you could translate it could mean the glory of God or the glory that God is showing to us. Well, those aren't exactly the same things. They're different. Is it the glory that God is imbued with or is it the glory that we see that God spreads around for all of us? Because those are two very different things and they take you to two very different places. But the really important one is at the very end. It's the last thing I read. It was to prove at the present time that he himself, we're talking about God, that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Doesn't sound complicated, right? But that's not what that phrase means. It could mean who has faith in Jesus. It also probably means who has the faith of Jesus. Faith in Jesus and the faith of Jesus are very different things, and they take you to completely different places. The faith in Jesus is something we all like to think that we have. But it also doesn't demand very much, does it? To have faith in Jesus. To say, oh yeah, Jesus, he was great. Oh yeah, I believe. Awesome. Move along. What does it mean if you have the faith of Jesus? How different does your life look? How differently do you do things? What does it mean to have the faith of Jesus? Isn't that what he's always on about in the Gospels? If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could tell that mountain to go jump into the sea. Does that mean you have to have the faith of Jesus, not the faith in Jesus? What does your prayer life look like if you have the faith of Jesus? What does your study of scripture look like if you have the faith of Jesus? What does your family look like if you have the faith of Jesus? What does your work look like? What do you look like if you have the faith of Jesus, not the faith in Jesus? It's the smallest of words, in or of. The problem we have is that in Greek, it's the same word. But in English, it means two very, very different things. We always talk about it the other way around, that you got you know, that wonderful word in English, love, that we use for eight billion things. Everything from, oh my gosh, I love your hair. I love what you've done with the place. To declaring our undying devotion to our beloved and everything in between, we use the same word. They don't in Greek. There's four or five different words you can use for all of those things. But we have the same problem in English. There's one word in Greek, but we have about three or four of them in English. There's one verb in Greek, we have six different ways we could translate it. To be, to become, to seem, to appear, those aren't identical. Those have shades of meaning. In and of don't mean the same thing. The faith of Jesus. And most translators translate it in. Why? Because it's easier. It's much easier to have faith in Jesus. Because like I said, don't we all have that? To have the faith of Jesus is so much harder. 
It's so much harder. And there's so many places in the scriptures where it's the same setup, the same words, but it's the faith of Abraham or it's the faith of Moses, and we let it go and translate it that way. But for this one, they all want to change it because it's hard. It's hard. It's the little things in life that trip us up, isn't it? It's not the big things. We figure those out. It's the little things that trip us up. I mean, isn't that often what creates most of the fights? It's little stuff. Isn't that true in most households? What finally everybody blows their stack? It's the series of little things that create a problem. We all irritate each other just enough to be that pebble in somebody's shoe or that grain of sand. It's the small things that make all the difference in life. And that's what I want you to hear today, is that it's the small things we do that make a difference. The world tells us that it's things like saying, you know, please and thank you and having manners and saying you're welcome and holding the door open for somebody or holding the elevator for them that, you know, being on time and, and, and sticking to your word and stopping to help someone who needs it, being sincere, sharing what you have, listening, those are the things that, that we're supposed to do in the world, aren't we? Those little things that make the difference. I remember having those, you know, pounded into me when I was young. If you're on time, you're late. Making sure we, you know, that you said your pleases and thank yous and your welcomes. Then with my kids, I had to teach them to say yes, ma'am. No, sir. It was the South. You had to add the ma'am and sir part. It was not optional. It took me a little while. I was like, listen to your father. He'll, he'll explain it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I still yes ma'am on occasion, just out of habit. But those little things make a difference in how people see you and how they respond to you. Those same small things, if we have the faith of Jesus, things like forgiveness and kindness and joy and, and peace and gentleness self-control, all those fruits of the Spirit, that's when you see those, when you have the faith of Jesus. And that's what I, I want to remind you of, the faith of Jesus. It's a reminder we all need. It's a lesson we all need to learn again and again. Paul is, is reminding us all that it's the smallest things that make all of the difference. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this chance to be in your presence, to be able to, to worship you in community, to be able to be your people. We thank you for the gift of your word, for the ways that it teaches and, and reminds and and pushes us forward. Help it to lead us to new places and new things, this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful gifts with which you have blessed our lives. Take these gifts, these tokens, and use them to build your realm, to heal the brokenhearted, bind up those who are wounded, 
welcome the stranger, become the gate of hope, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord, on this day when we have so much to, to celebrate, to be thankful and grateful for, on this day when we recognize so many young people for their accomplishments, as we recognize them as they get ready to take their next steps in life. It's a wonderful day. But it's also a day of, of a little bit of sadness as life is going to change, as things will be different. We know we can't hold on to the same things forever. We know that life always changes around us. We lift up to you, Lord, the names that we brought this morning. We, we pray for, for the family of Dennis Schulteis. He's had a long journey. And we pray for, for comfort for his family. We pray for, for Lindsay and for Tegan. Tegan's been such a wonderful friend for so long. It's so hard to see our, our beloved ones get old and start to fail. It's difficult to watch. But we pray for we pray for, for Tegan's comfort in the days ahead. We lift up to you, Lord, those we carry deep within our hearts known only to you. We thank you, Lord, for this chance to, to lift one another up in prayer, to be able to be there for each other. for the chance to, to not just mourn and grieve, but also to celebrate, to celebrate birthdays, to celebrate how special folks are in our lives. The chance to be able to, to celebrate a, a life well lived. We so often grumble as we get older but old age is a privilege that not everybody gets. So we give, we give thanks and honor all those who are here. We lift all these prayers to you, Lord, in the strong name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'll please stand, our closing hymn is, Will You Come and Follow Me?
thank you again to all of you for being here and for sharing this day together. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ lives in you and has something he wants to do through you wherever you are. Believe this and go in the grace and the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace.